<laughs> Are we taping? Oh, no, we're not going to be here. We're not going to be here for... We just told our guest, Arthur Luxembourg, that we're going to be here for four and a half hours taping, and he literally <laughs> had his mouth dropped. Arthur, no, 45 I, minutes is the episode. No, that's good. That's it. That's okay. all it is. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. <laughs> welcome. I, I can't do anything in 45 minutes. <laughs> oh, my God. Um, welcome back to And Here's Modi. We have our... Well, hold on. Let's just, let's, just, let's just shimmy in here like the way we usually do. We are back in the studio. Uh, we, of course, in the beginning, thank our collaborators, our sponsors, our friends, a &H, Provisions, best hot dogs in the world, Glot Kosher. Not only that, the meats are amazing. The delivery, how they deliver is amazing. They're so proud of the factory. You can always go for a visit there. Um, uh, to, uh, uh, coordinate that with Seth. And, and what's the, the website? www.kosherdogs.net. And my husband is still walking around with his A&H jacket. My dad golfs with his jacket and hat nonstop. <laughs> um, and then we have our other sponsor, Whites and Luxembourg, the law firm that does not only well, but they do good. They do. That's what we were told to... <coughs> That was what we were told that that the that the plug should be. I always try to add things on, like yeah. it's the law firm you want in case Chas Shalom you need a law firm behind you. Right, like they're like a fire extinguisher. Like a fire extinguisher in the corner, but no one was ever happy with. I, so, luckily for us today, we have in the studio Arthur Luxembourg of Whites and Luxembourg. Yeah, yeah, Modi. Yeah. Oh, yeah, lucky that what the rabbi canceled. <laughs> so I was the, yeah, yeah, lucky the rabbi canceled. So I was the closest thing, <laughs> no. right, between the rabbi and hot dogs, right? Great, call Luxembourg over. Uh, uh, He'd be a great filler, you know, no, for this. We had, we, we, First we, of all, I've been asking I, Arthur to come on for actual months. Yes. As soon as you expressed an interest, we've been hounding you and trying to coordinate with you to, to do a, a studio shoot. True or false? And, okay. But let me just True. tell you something. This is exactly the relationship Arthur and I have. Spontaneous. So I, I said, hey, uh, Tuesday, you want to do the, the podcast? He said, sure. That was it. Last night, I walked out of the gym. 5.30. It feels like 9.50 because yeah, it's, yeah, so, it's dark. so dark. I was starving. I, Leo had plans with his friend and I was like, just text Arthur, 2nd Avenue Deli. He goes, now. And what's the first thing we did? We split a hot dog. Right there. Really? We split a hot dog. Exactly. Yeah. We went to 2nd Avenue Deli. It's like, that, that's a, we're on the spot. What are you doing? Come here. I meet me there. Go there. Let's go here. I got an event. Come. Last, ten, within 10 minutes. Like It's not it's like, I have you on the books for next Thursday. It's like, we have a spontaneous relationship. Right or wrong? See, yeah, 100%. But you see, Periel, what happens is with Modi, right? He goes into the restaurant. He thinks he's trying to eat healthy, right? He's trying, I'm gonna have chicken and soup. Okay, that was your plan, right? I ate half your sandwich. I ate half the pastrami exactly. sandwich. Had a pastrami half, sandwich. First he had a half a hot dog of mine. Then after the soup and the chicken, he had half of my pastrami sandwich. He's like Dina. He walks in there, you can tell he wants to order the entire menu I, that's how, yes. just to taste everything. That's just how one I am. bite of everything. That's the way to. I that's thought the I way behaved way myself last. You were amazing last <laughs> night. You had only half a pastrami sandwich, half a hot dog, we, uh, soup, a kreplach, and there. a kreplach, yeah. and that was it. Yeah. And then they a regular, just look covered Shabbos kodesh, and then that was it. And that was it. That Perfect was, situation. Uh, yeah, and it was amazing. And we got to just really give the shout out to Second Avenue Deli. It's always something Hamish happens there. You know who was there last night? Arnold Graham. We, we had on the, Oh, you're kidding. Yeah, we've had him on the podcast. Arnold Graham, who books the who booked the Catskills from 1912 to today. Everybody from Frank Sinatra to Milton Berle. And he sat with us. And we had a great conversation That's with him. Cute. Nice it was laughs. Just a, a nice, nice laughs. Second Avenue Deli is amazing. Right. It's, it's, where it, is it's it a now? place where people meet yeah. and go. I feel comfortable. Yeah. It's a Hamish place. It's a Hamish place. What's and so Hamish? I go, Hamish, homie, you know, oh, Hamish. No. no. So I'm telling you, and like, especially like Leo and I, we have a big age gap. But we have friends, like his friends in, in their 30s are my friends too. My friends in their 45s plus shipping and handling um, are also his friends. Uh -huh. And we all go to do things together. But like when they go to these restaurants that are pitch black, and the chair, Arthur, they took us to a, took me to a restaurant for someone's birthday, one of our friend's birthday. We sat on a crate 
with a pillow. I had scoliosis by the time I went out of there. <laughs> the food was gnarly, and there was like nothing I could eat. It was like it was one of those. What, first of all, it was pitch black. I couldn't read the menu. I know. And, and, and the, know. The, the, the 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 menu was in Rashi script. You could. I can't <laughs> read. And I turned to Leo and I go, "Is there anything here for me?" He literally goes, "Just a soup." I go, "Perfect soup." They served the soup ice cold. It had like a peanut flavor. It was the most, prisoner of war shouldn't um, get such a soup. And also it's so loud in those places. Oh, you can hear. But for me, that's my situation typically, which is why I never eat off of whatever the menu has, right? I'm always looking for like the, ch the children's menu. <laughs> okay, where I could get like a macaroni and cheese uh, or something. Uh, hopefully they make something that I could eat on the kids menu. So yeah. first of all, we should backtrack here a second. Yeah. Because the other interesting thing about Arthur is that he also is Jackie's father, who we've had on the show. a guest, and we've been dropping videos of her amazing food, who by the way, I don't know if you saw the video, Jackie sent Krembo. Oh. Mini Krembos, which wasn't, those of you who don't know what a Krembo is, it's like this cream filled, chocolate covered, thing with this, the most delicious cookie it's on the is, bottom. It's, it's like a very popular Israeli. It's an Israeli food. And whenever I used to go to Israel, it's the first thing I would do. I used to good. land in Israel, 12, 11 years old. My aunt gave me some shekels to have in my uh, lira. Back then it was lira. And uh, I used to run downstairs and buy karembo. That was it. And Jackie made them. And they were so, I called them the, the birthright cookie. <laughs> it's the birthright cookie. They were amazing. Very proud of Jack. Yeah, she's she said you're you're a big fan of snacks, like actual snacks, cookies, and you came in here too, and you were like, "Yeah, where are the snacks?" Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I mean, wouldn't you expect there to be, you know, at a studio where you're filming something, there should be some snacks like M and M's and Milky Ways, you know, things that really pep you up? No, no, Modi. When, whenever and I've been to Arthur's studio, whenever well, I've been to Arthur's office, there's always sandwich. It's literally like, yeah. like succession. My, my, my joke about succession. Yeah. There's always food and pastries and right. Fiji water. That's and nice. right, So why always. wouldn't you guys plan a little something? You got Welch's gummies. <laughs> it's not all. We no, it's, have, the studio has no, that. Well, you're whatever. saying we should be feeding our guests? There should be something here to lighten it up over here. Not that the mood is not light. It's very light. But I'm just saying, a couple of appropriate uh, snacks, pastries, I should have brought the Jack snacks. You should have brought. We've had them here. They've I know. Been, they've I know. They don't. Here. Right. They don't last. Right. I should have brought it. Yeah. No. My we, bad. Okay. My so bad. Now, Arthur and I met. So that was the next question. Yeah. Arthur and I met. In he's a, he's he's a thing in Great Neck. He's a, the, the 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 Great Neck place with where I know from Dina and Johnny. Oh, have shalom. And we met there, and we like knew each other, and then. Wait, so, so you met you met Arthur through Dina? Through Your Dina, yeah, Dina. right? Yeah. Through Dina. Yeah, I think you yeah. were in our house for Shabbat yes. or something. Yeah. Every Friday night we met and we knew each other. How long You would make fun of us. No, no, know. no. I didn't make fun of you until I didn't make fun of you until I got I'm, I I remembered last night when when we first really, really met. So now I'm doing a Passover program. Wait, how far back? How many years ago are we talking? A bunch. Yeah. A bunch of years. Ten. Okay. Like deep years back. Um I'm doing a Passover program in this hotel up in Rye, New York. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. It's a nice place, but it's Rye, New York. And it's like not where most fancy people go to Florida, uh, Mexico, Italy. And I get on stage and I see Arthur Luxemburg and Randy, his wife. And if you think he's over the top, you never saw over the top until you meet Randy. She dresses in like, yeah. you can't, uh, over the top, amazing. And I see them there. And I'm in shock. Now keep in mind, this is a hotel. It's not. It's a fancy. It's it's a good Ryan's program. Nice. Yeah, but it's it's still New York. What it is is, well, he, he you know he's doing it justice. He's describing it well. But a lot of people go there for, uh, it's it's a local hotel. So people that have to be local or people whose parents you know can't really travel. Right. Okay. There's always a reason. Like you always like the first night you arrive there, like everyone's looking at each other, trying to figure out why are you here. Right. Yes. So everybody's got like a reason. It can't just be, oh no, I'm here with the and Rye, Rye Hotel, Rye Town Hilton. And it's either someone yeah. has a mom or yeah. a grandparent that's that don't like 108 travel. and can't travel. Right. Like some grandmother does right. not want to okay. die, period. Or they have a daughter or daughter-in-law who's in her 12th month 
and they can't fly. It, Am I right it, or wrong? It's hundred percent. There's a Th reason. That's, that's you the reason. You don't go. You didn't just go to the right town, Hilton. And I guess, you know, sure enough, the program doesn't exist anymore. Why were you there? I was there at the time because my father couldn't travel. Right. Uh, so, uh, so now I'm on stage. You're talking about there may be 600, 800 people in the room. And I see Arthur Luxemburg in the back. And I just start going, <coughs> <Okay. coughs> and I go, oh my God, I think I got mesothelioma. <laughs> Arthur, yeah, yeah. we have a case. Yeah. And that was it. That was it. We just it was. became friends. It was. That was it. it he was. came over. I had. I went with them for like for dessert afterwards. That was after Modi. That was after they got you a proper sound system. Yeah, I know. The they wanted Modi to uh, like operate off of his phone. You know. No, it was awful. But but Wait, Randy tell got in there. Why and that's so funny with, though? What? Tell tell the well, people who are listening why that's so funny. Because Arthur Luxemburg's uh, uh, L Whites and Luxemburg's known for like settling cases for billions of dollars for people who have mesophilioma or whatever you those- You pronounce that good. What? You pronounce that good. Mesophilioma. Yeah. Really what good. is Meso mesophilioma? Mesothelioma is a very rare cancer that only occurs, only happens with people that were exposed to asbestos. Okay. And there were a lot of other products that had asbestos in it, uh, like talc, things like that. But it's a signature disease. So if you have mesothelioma, there is a- perfect chance that you were exposed to asbestos. Now, you don't always know how you were exposed to it, but it's a signature disease. Okay, and so when you became an attorney, where, where'd you go to law school? Uh, I went to Cardoza. Okay. Um, uh, went to Cardoza and it was difficult to get a job. Um, in fact, you know, I worked for very little money. And then I went to, the, I went to a law firm where I met my partner. And we were there for a couple of years. Mr. White's. Perry. Perry White's. Perry. Perry White's. Oh, yeah. Perry White's with a with a Y. Okay, so. Uh, and I met my partner, and we we had a very a very synergistic relationship. Um, I was a I was a serious guy. They they didn't have any place for me to even sit in this law firm, so I was sitting in the library, and I was a I was a law guy. That's what that's what we were called. You know, I ended up doing appeals, but I was a law guy. Uh, somebody needed a question of law, you know, they would come back from court, they would ask me, I would work on it. And he was a trial guy. And he was a low, a low guy on the totem pole. And I was also a low guy. And he had nobody to help him on these legal questions. Wow. So, you know, he'd come back and he'd say, Lux, could you help me with, you know, with this? So we had a very, very good relationship from a standpoint of he needed help, I was able to help him. Uh, the law firm had like a criteria uh, value of, uh, of cases. You weren't allowed to bring a case in. Like somebody had a small accident, no real injuries. You couldn't bring that case into the office. And White's was a big business getter. And he used to get a lot of cases. They were shit cases. They were garbage and the firm wouldn't take them. So he said, Lux, look, the firm's not taking these cases. He goes, I'm gonna bring them in you work the cases up and I'm going to settle them. And it became a very, very close relationship. That's how we began. Wow. And we accumulated- How many years ago? Almost 40 years ago. Wow. Wow. Almost 40 years ago. What does that mean, a shit case? Like a shit case is a case oh, where- Oh, person. A shit case where, where, uh, where uh, you know, a, a car hits you in the rear and nothing happens and you both get out. There's no damage to your car. You, nobody goes to the doctor or the hospital, but yet, somebody wants to pursue a case, right? You get a lot of those. As a young lawyer, you know, uh, my daughter's working with me. She gets a lot of those cases. Liz, she gets a lot of those cases. And, you know, even though we don't want to take those cases because there's very little value, we sneak them in sometimes mm -hmm. for her because she's able to make money, the firm makes money, and we're happy to do it. But that's a garbage case. Okay. Like taking no, a gig, like taking a gig. There's no injuries. Uh, there's but no so injuries. Why, you were taking them because you were making a little bit of money and you were young and you needed to? We were, we were starving. I mean, he didn't have money. I didn't have money, right? We would take the cases. The firm didn't want to take the cases. We took them. I worked them up. I got the medical records. I put the cases into suit, right? Wow. And gave it to him and he settled them. And, but you're uh, also a trial lawyer. You're also in trial. I'm huh? an appeals lawyer. Okay, that's where I started because I was a law guy originally. Mm -hmm. So 
an appeals guy, an appeals <clears throat> guy is is a guy who would argue a case after we either won or lost. So if we lost a case, we would try to get it reversed. If we won a case and the other side wanted to get the damages reduced or something like that, appeal. they would appeal it and I would go oppose it. So that was where I got my beginning. Uh, and, and it was amazing training. It was yeah. really fantastic. And then whose idea was it to start your own firm? We started out of necessity. Um, uh, Whites had uh, a great relationship from a friend in law school uh, that was really counsel to the trade unions, to the building trades. And as a result, in 1986, laws were passed that would allow lawsuits like asbestos and other lawsuits as well to be brought. And that's how we really began. We left because of that, because we were able to start our own firm handling those kind of cases. But when you got like your first mesothelioma case, you weren't like, we just hit the I, jackpot or like that happened by accident? I want to tell you, Perry. They call you Perry? Gro all my friends from growing up call me Perry. Love that. You can call me Perry. Love that. What? And what do people call you now? Perry L. All right. I mean, so my some, friends, some call her other things. <laughs> so, so, <laughs> so my, my young, <laughs> my, <laughs> so, so my young, young friends called me Arthur. Uh -huh. You know, my, in, in high school, I was Artie. Oh. Yeah. In fact, my wife, Randy, calls me Artie. And now I'm back to Arthur. I'm, I can't, I can't say Artie for you. It doesn't fit. Yeah. I'm just saying, right. And, and there was a period of time. I was unhappy with Arthur and yeah. I told my parents and it was the most upsetting thing. I said, you know, I really don't like my name. Such a I, great name. I like Artie Arthur. better. And Arthur. now I can't even think of, you know. Where did you grow up? Grew up in Woodmere. Woodmere. Really, yeah. uh, really epic, epic, epic childhood. Uh, we really, um, you know, my parents really did it right. It was an amazing, uh, an amazing time. We really, really had a, a wonderful relationship with a, Younger brother, older sister, still do. My parents were amazing. And uh, it was just an amazing childhood. You know, really That's wonderful. so nice to hear. Yeah. And so so Arthur and I, just because, you know, he lives in Great Neck, but during the week he's he's in the city. Cause so here's here's a place in So again, when I'm free and he's free, we just are you around? Let's go get a bite here, there, wherever. And we get to know each other. We sit I'm every time we have a meal, it's like a podcast. We catch up on things that we haven't even spoken about. Things like Tower Air. Do you, you, know, <laughs> yeah. you, know, you know what that is? Of course. Right, like, I go explain to Leah what Tower Air is. Yeah. It was this. It yeah. was this airline that was in the in the 90s or 80s, that out of nowhere, and yeah. it, it was this Israeli. They flew back and forth to Israel. Only to Israel, right? Only to Israel, mm -hmm. and the flight was like for 16 cents, <laughs> and, and for, for 18 cents you got to fly in first class, uh -huh. and they served you in the the silverware. It said either Delta or United or Eastern. They what they bought whatever was left from other airlines. It was like the <laughs> TJ Maxx. Well, did you ever the spend the 18 cents and fly business? Always. Class? That was okay. the first time I ever flew okay. business class was Tower Air. Okay, me too. Me too. So I'm flying in Tower Air. So what was amazing about Tower Air, it was like one of these ancient planes. They had an upstairs. Yep. I okay. I so so you weren't disturbed by any kids on the plane. You're flying business class. It's upstairs. Okay. The seat didn't go all the way back. No. The seat went back about 25 degrees, and there was one of those metal leg rests that would like pop up. You th you thought you were in like a doctor's office or something. Yeah. Uh, a little. A, Right? It would pop yeah, up. Like the gynecologist. So the first time, stirrups. So the, stirrups. So the first time I'm on this plane, okay, looking around, about a dozen seats in there, all Israelis, okay? And the staff is Israelis, the hostesses are Israelis. Anyway, I'm sitting there, the seat goes back, and I'm comfortable. I never flew like that before. It was in my own little area up there. This, this uh, hostesses come out, okay? Hostesses. This guy pulls up his uh, armrest and has like a screwdriver and there's some button that he pushes and his seat goes all the way back. <laughs> it like collapses the seat. <laughs> I couldn't believe what I'm saying. All of a sudden you see all the guys doing it. They pass around the screwdriver. Every guy's seat goes all the way back. Then what they do is they take the empty crates from the dishes. They Stop. stick a crate. You can't make this up. They stick a crate under the under the leg rest yep. to to raise it, and they make a full reclining bed. Yep. Okay. 
And that's that was my first experiences. I flew tower forever. The, wow. The, I stopped. I stopped before they actually went out of business because uh, it, they once canceled the flight. We were all on the plane. And some, they canceled the flight. Some light was on or something. And they and couldn't take off. Couldn't take off. And I said, I'm never flying this again. It was, you know, we, 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 we had an episode here. We talked about smoking on airplanes back in the, it would have been an old episode. And that, that, that whole flight was smoking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The whole flight was a smoking section. Mm -hmm. But the funniest thing about them was, so they used to go Israel, uh, Tel Aviv, New York, Tel Aviv, New York. And then they added Miami. So people were flying Miami to, to New York mm -hmm. as like a regular flight. But the plane <coughs> had 900 people on it. So to board, it was a two hour boarding experience. Oh my God. To get from Miami to New York, it was crazy. And the funniest thing about Tower Air was they once had an accident on the runway and um, I'm from the wheel and the, the, the plane like it was really like, it like leaned over tilted over on the wheels and the first thing they did was they sent they sent somebody out there to spray paint the tower on the fin so when the news came it wouldn't be they would or you wouldn't see just right. Tower Air fin right. In the newspapers, it was the shadiest airline. Oh my god! But um, but something else, Arthur and I have in common is we both stutter. Really? Trial lawyer stutters. Could you imagine? A comedian stutters. So that's so so that's actually. I mean, so that's actually, you know, you definitely remember when we met. But we, so so I, I was performing a wedding. I was going to perform a wedding, and uh, I asked Modi for help. I said, you know, I'm, I'm trying to, I want to lighten up the crowd for this kind of wedding. Maybe we'll get together. We were not, we were not friends. We knew each other. We knew each other from Dina. We, we were, we were good acquaintances. Yeah. We knew each other from, we knew each other from Great Neck. You were at Dina's house uh, and, uh, you know, we were acquaintances, you know, but, but we saw each other enough that I asked you, I don't remember where I was, maybe at one of the dinners or that you, that you did. I asked for help and I said, you know, okay. I said, I said, and we'll meet, we'll meet. And you know what? In exchange for, for your help, I'm going to buy you a suit. Uh, suit I'm, I'm, I'm going <laughs> to buy you a suit. Okay. So, so <clears throat> we meet. The end of the story is, by the way, is I never performed the wedding. And, and, the, suit, the, and the suit, and the suit the never fit him. And, it, and the suit never fit him. It, it was, it was, uh, I, I didn't, I said, I'll do it for free. He goes, no, come me. I always make suits. I, those of you who don't know Arthur Luxembourg, the suits are insane. Wait, we haven't gotten there yet, though. I know, we but have this is nothing. Oh, it's, this is does, nothing. This you should does, see uh, what he comes popping just up with. It's a Tuesday. It's just, it's a Tuesday. just the, but, yellow. But look what came out of that. But look what came out of that, of, of that, uh, you know, it's good. But, but no, good but we, he really, I think you realized so, I started when you came to see me at the comedy cellar. No, but Modi, I never saw you. I saw you at a couple of, I saw you at a couple of performances like in North Shore yeah. or, or at Dina's house, but I never saw, I never. Was no, that, but you, I told you one time, hey, I'm going to the comedy cellar, come down. That was and after you saw me we work out new material and was, you go to me, you stutter. No, but that was after we, that was after we, became friends you would you would say i'm going to brooklyn or something for 15 minutes come yeah it was at the it was at the uh, peninsula hotel yeah when we met when we made the suit but when you realized that i stutter yeah when i realized you stutter i said was at the comedy cellar and we discussed it and because i was working out new material and when i work out new material my stutter comes out because mm -hmm. I, I don't have it down yet mm -hmm. and, and, I, and, and he I, goes you and, stutter and, and i think that when you're with someone else that stutters you stutter more absolutely i mean it's just a fact i mean when i was at this other firm where i met my partner uh i was assigned to a guy one of the main trial lawyers there and he would come back from court every day uh he'd come back from court and he'd look for me and He'd go over issues with me, and I'd research the law on the issues that he was handling. And uh, I first started working there, and I would go meet with him. And you know, I didn't realize that I studied so badly. Maybe I did back then. Uh, so I was talking to him, and I was stuttering. He was stuttering too. Oh my god! He was a stutterer. Yeah. And he goes to the head of the firm. He goes, "What'd you do?" This, what'd you do? You gave me a kid. You gave me a kid. He's mocking me. So, so the guy goes, what do you mean he's mocking you? What are you talking about? He goes, he's stuttering. He's mocking me. He's making fun of me. He goes, you idiot. He's not making fun of you. He's a stutterer. Yeah. 
When stutterers are with other stutterers, we stutter a lot more. Why? When I used to be on the road with Stuttering John from the Howard Stern Show, I couldn't get words out. I I couldn't get words out. And one of the funniest things uh, Arthur was telling me was, and he's always trying to help people. He's always trying to, what can he do to help somebody else? What, what, what organization can you perform for? What kind of, always trying to do. So he was telling me that he was approached by this uh, stuttering organization. Yeah. yeah. And you took lessons to, to, to fix your stuttering. I no? did. My, my, I mean, my grandmother took me for speech therapy, mm-hmm. you know, to Long Island Jewish Hospital. It had to be for a decade, three times a week. Wow. wow. Yeah, it had to be for a decade, three times a week. You know, it's a, it's every, there were a lot of different ways to help or cure or treat stuttering. There were a lot of different theories about what it was. They, they really never completely figured it out. Still? Still. Still. And she would pick me up three days a week. I'd go to this guy, Arthur Jacobs, uh, who was a therapist at Long Island Jewish uh, Speech and Hearing. And uh, she'd pick me up from Queens. Uh, She'd pick me up in Woodmere drive me back to Queens to Long Island Jewish Hospital, stay there for an hour, drive me back to Woodmere, three days a week. Wow. And, wow. and it formed the most incredible relationship between a grandson and a, and a grandmother. I think the only other people that have that relationship is my mother, you know, my mother and, and, her, and her grandchildren. It's something that's unbelievable. And it's something that I hope, you know, that my grandchildren say, and, and Randy hopes, you know, her grandchildren say one day that the most epic relationship with a grandparent. That's you know. incredible. Yeah, so, but let's just back to the stuttering thing. So, so we, 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 when you're a stutterer, you have tricks. You have tricks. Like, I can't say M, S, and L. So when people ask me, what's your name? I never just say Modi. I, because b- now I'm saying it, it coming because I'm already in the conversation. But I say things like, hi, I'm Modi. Yeah. So the air comes out already, and I just yeah. put the M in there. Soft. Hi, I'm Modi. Because yeah. you learned to do that. You also took you classes? You learned the tricks. No. These, you uh, never th- took any. I, I have my tricks. This is my in my head. When someone asks me, what size shirt do you want? I can't just say large. I can't just say large. I have to say, I'll take a large. Hi, because yeah. it's already the words are already moving. You figured that out by yourself. I figured that myself. You stutter what? on it. You stutter on F's. N- no, because F has a F, a F. It's not a. F- it's not when I close my mouth. S S. You have to close your mouth. M is a closed mouth. Yeah, you M is to- tough, M especially is tough. your name. It's my name. M yeah. is hard for me too. My sister's with an M. Okay, but your stutter's indiscernible. It, it's his you, tricks are different. No, no. no. First I of all, I I know these things because my best friend from <clears throat> since I was three is a stutterer, and she attended many national stutterer organization. There's like a get together, an annual, like everybody who stutters. Ariel, but I'm like you don't realize it because I'm so good at it. Yeah. But like Modi, will say his name, and he'll cancel through it. It's called. Mm-hmm. Whereas me. I'll say something else. I'll just right. substitute. Right, right, I'll, right. I won't say a word right. that I ha- may have a problem with, you know, uh, unless I have to. And sometimes I will, like Modi. But like you said, I'm in the conversation. Right. But in the abstract, if somebody said, who'd you have dinner with last night? And I said, Modi, I might stutter on that M or my sister's name, which is Meryl. But if you're in the conversation, you won't. Or right. Or you use the techniques that you mm-hmm. that you've learned. How come you never did speech therapy? I was very lucky that I started to study voice. Okay. In college, so when you study voice, you learn how to put everything forward. Yeah. So you learn everything forward. Now everything's in your front of your mouth, in front of your face. So now you're speaking from here, not from here where you can really get stuck on stuff and. I have trouble getting words out. You're speaking in the front of your face, your facial mask. That's right. And then it, it's, uh, it makes it a lot easier. Yeah. But again, when I'm doing new material, I'm up there. I'm not sure what words are going to be the best for the bit. Mm. I just, it's a mess. And sometimes even worse, it makes me, it makes me curse. But I just, I just want to, <laughs> I, I just want to, I, I, I just want to close the loop on the stuttering. Uh, Why? It's such a great topic. It, it's um, We could do a whole show on that. Yeah. And, and we should, okay? And we should do something together 
for these uh, for some of these organizations. We really because you didn't like what you saw there. So he was gonna go. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, whoa. yeah. Whoa, yes, yes. Very true. What? Okay, so you know, people call me all the time. Different organizations. They find out you're a stutterer. Don't, don't ask me how. There's no like. There's no like. They're gonna be calling you from this all the time now. From this podcast, it's gonna yeah, be out there. Right. So anyway. Uh, they they call. So I, I agree, you know, it was a nice guy. He wanted me to come and I went and I, you know, I sponsored his dinner, you know, I was, and the dinner was essentially a, like, like a, a they put the stutterers in a community. Mm -hmm. So, so they gave them uh, an opportunity to be together. Uh, there was a camp for stutterers. There was yeah, a, yeah, I know okay. all about it. But my objection was, and what I actually gave money for that night when they had like an open appeal, I said, what about therapy? Yeah. And because eventually these kids are not gonna be in elementary school. And there were some terribly profound, affected students and children there. And my heart was, 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 was destroyed. My heart was breaking for these students that really couldn't speak. And I'm saying to myself, they have to, there, there's therapy in this place, this particular organization wasn't giving any therapy. They had a camp, they had a place. It was a safe place for stutterers to go. But what happens when you're not in that safe place anymore and you're in society? Okay, but wait a second. Putting, from what I'm gathering from what you guys are saying, putting a bunch of stutterers in a room together seems like the worst idea I ever because nobody can get a word horrible out. Horrible in the world. I, for me, it would be the biggest nightmare. When yeah. I sit down at a dinner and there's somebody new there and I could see that they stutter, I'm like, oh, <laughs> this is the worst. Because the goal of the organization. <laughs> it's <laughs> awful. It's an awful thing. It's the goal. <laughs> it's the go so rude. Because the goal of the organization was not to help stutterers get over, you know, their their stutter. It was it was basically to give them a place where they didn't feel threatened. So even stutterers in a room that were all stuttering together, even though it was it was sad, it gave them a a, a safe place. Okay, but, but to me, but to me, they need oh therapy. No, I am I'm all for therapy. Like let's see. And by the way, not everybody's going to be able to get better. But, well, you know, no, but there, but there are ways to improve. Therapy does. I mean, I think therapy has been proven to be very beneficial. A thousand percent. Yeah. What and was your grandma's these... name? Seal. You should start Seal's Club. You should start a little foundation. You know what? To I help. think there. I think there are great. I think there are great um, organizations out there. Um, this one that I went to a couple of dinners. I think it's a great organization. Okay. Because it gives them a safe place. But I think that the the problem is, and it's about funding. That's really what it's all about. At the end of the day, you know, it's about getting them money. They have money to do what they want to do, mm. but not okay. to have speech therapists. Right. And uh, I guess the government is not giving them enough money. But and and these are you know these are these are children, you know these are children that that um, a lot a lot of them come from underprivileged homes, so there's not money to do private therapy right. and things like that. Like I felt after leaving that night, like, give me five kids. Give me five kids and let me get them therapy. That's, I love that. You know, let me, let me, uh, they're not gonna talk like this, but it seemed like that wasn't their goal. <clears throat> so I just let that go. I could save that for another organization. I could save that for something else. I love that though. That's beautiful. Yeah. That's it's an amazing thing. No, author is listen. When we say that uh, Weiss and Luxembourg not only does well, they do good. Yeah. They, he's in a million different. He hits me every time we're out with another organization he's a part of. Shoes uh, for for people who don't don't get new shoes. Uh, every type of charity he's involved in, and it's fun. And it's you know. It's funny because whenever we sit, we always talk, end up talking about how to help somebody else, which, which is what the Lubavitcher Rebbe said. Yes. The Lubavitcher yes. Rebbe said when two Jews meet. No, no, no. Start when you give them, when he gave you the dollar. Right. When the, the, the Lubavitcher Rebbe, the Lubavitcher Rebbe. And but by the way, people have been asking me on DMs, what is Chabad Lubavitch? I'm going to tell you what that is. Chabad Lubavitch is 
Not many years ago, people used to line up in Brooklyn to meet a very holy rabbi. As soon as they met him, he gave them a dollar to go help somebody else with that dollar. And then he said, bracha v'atzlacha, blessings and success. You need to help somebody else before you receive the blessings and success. And that's what Chabad Lubavitch is. And wherever you are in the world, and you see a place that's Chabad House, Lubavitch Center, or even the holiest of holy of them, the Chabad on campus, you're dealing with an emissary of that rabbi. Whoever she or he that you're dealing with, the rabbi's wife or the rabbi, they are emissaries of this rabbi, and that is Chabad Lubavitch. And Arthur instinctively is always like, what can we do to help? No, but you always. said that the thing is, is that the first thing you should always talk about is how, when you're talking about Jews, is yeah. how can I help somebody else? That's the first question you're supposed to ask, because, right? I mean, because look, this is, this is how I look at it. Okay, this, this is how I look at it in my narrow world. I wake up in the morning, you got a choice. You could be a giver or you could be a taker. You ask God, make me a giver today. Put me, give me, and by the way, I'm not talking about money, guys. It could be anything. You know, you know I saw a, uh, I was at a doctor's office today and I saw a woman who was clearly lost, okay? She, was, she, she didn't know where she was going she had no clue, and she's looking at the directories. She's looking at her watch. She's looking at a piece of paper. Be a giver. You walk over to that woman. Right. I'm late for my appointment, okay? I'm late. I don't care if I miss my appointment. I see this lady. She's lost. Happens to be, turns out she's half blind. Mm. Can't even see, all right? She gives me, I said, can I help you? Doesn't speak English. Oh, jeez. Speaking Spanish. I don't speak any Spanish. I take the paper. She's in the wrong building. So I'm trying to explain to her. I get someone to help me to speak Spanish, to tell her she's in the wrong building, where she has to go, down the block. It's a different office. I say to myself, this lady is never going to get to this office. She never. I take her. I walk up the block. It takes me an extra five minutes. So instead of being 15 minutes late, I'm now a half hour late. But the lady got to where she's going. Right. That's being a giver. A hundred percent. Nothing to do with money. Money. Okay. It's just waking up and finding something good. Always. You could do. Always find somewhere. I pray. Uh, give me opportunities right. to help. Yeah. Always. And it, money is energy. Money is just energy. Right. And it's how you. It's the most oh, dangerous. Oh, that's my landlord. It's the most dangerous energy because it's energy that you can use for to build a hospital or to blow one up. You understand? Mm -hmm. That's the, it's the energy of, of, of money. It's, you can start a war with it or you can start a charity with it. It's a crazy energy. Um, so it, that's one thing, but to help somebody, sometimes a phone call, call somebody randomly who's not expecting your call. The, it lights their face up. Thousand percent. Someone sends a, a DM. People send us DMs, author, half Torahs. You never saw DMs this right. long. And they tell you every right. list, but just sit there and answer them. And, and it's that's just, it's just good. Just put good energy out. It always comes back. You see, you see, you see sometimes a kid goes over to somebody like an athlete to sign something and, and you know, the guy, the athlete blows them off. I saw it at a game once. The athlete was sitting a couple of rows next to me and kid kid walks over, a five-year-old kid walks over to, to get an autograph from this has-been athlete. A has-been, a nobody. And the guy blows him off like, no, right? And I reach over and I say to the guy, you know, you know how lucky you are that some little kid thinks that you're so amazing that he wants to have your autograph because like, how do you deny that, right? One day, one day when nobody wants your autograph, you're gonna wish that there would be some little kid, right, right, two feet tall walking up to you to get your autograph, right? Just be a giver, guys. Yeah. It's so easy, like you said, a phone call to someone that you know is down or you haven't yeah. spoken to, <clears throat> that's, that's what it's all about. Right, so Arthur came with me to Kerastir. Mm -hmm. We weren't hungry. We were two hour drive north of Budapest to go see the grave of Reb Shaila. Um, we went there with his great grandson, Reb Yoikel, Dina's father. And you know, we, we're on the, we were on the bus 
and Which is uh, my favorite part of the story. Why? You on like a bus. At it wasn't a bad bus. It's unbelievable. You were on the bus with us now? I wasn't going to take it, Modi. And then I, figured, <laughs> I wasn't going to take it. And then I said to myself, what am I doing? No, it was I'm a part here of for the whole experience. Yes. I'm here for the whole experience. He left back in the Maybach. A Maybach came <laughs> to pick him up. He, he, he drove back in the Maybach. Oh. Everything was great. Well, the ride that's up. That's because we went to. Right. No, you should see. We were. <laughs> no. I had to catch a flight. I, I wait, couldn't. Wait, listen to me. You so, had it, it, the car was an hour. The bus was like seven hours. <laughs> yeah. That's what I'm saying. When no, was the it, last time you took oh, a bus? On uh, the bus. No, with, it was great. With, with, it was great. With the rabbi. It with was great. His father, right. uh, Rabbi Yoyko. Why is right. Why is the rabbi on a bus? Oh, he what do you mean? It's, it's he's show. The, it's it's showtime. This is yeah. his Oscar. Yeah. This is the oh, Oscars. Yeah. He's showing <laughs> up. There's 10,000 or 20,000 Hasidic men, people there coming to this rabbi's yeah. grave, and we show up. Yeah. And we do the shachrit services because his son dedicated the oh. Torah. And here's Arthur in a sea of Hasidic guys sitting there dressed like this. One of the best. Little one of the best pictures of all time. Yeah. Took. One of the best ones that I have. Epic picture. Because, Epic, because, because just sitting there. What was amazing about, about the day was we were surrounded by different people. Yeah. You know, it was this, it was, it was Reb Shaila's, it was, it was his York Your site, site. And we were all there. Everybody was there for the same reason. Everybody was there hoping to get something out of it, something that was either missing in your life or mm. to improve something that wasn't going well. Everybody was there for a reason, but everybody was different. There were Hasidim, but there were different sects of Hasidim. There were secular people. There were religious people, not religious people, all davening together in one place. Yeah, at the rabbi's grave. And um, Great. obviously it works because people keep coming back. Right. I went two years in a row and... Um, it's um, but what I was saying was on the bus. I remember you were talking about being how important it is to be a giver and not a taker. So Dina's father, Rabbi Yisrael, Rabbi Yoichel takes out this wad of cash, and calls his youngest grandson over, Naftali, Dina's youngest son, and goes, "Come here," and hands this to him. And the kid's like, yeah. <laughs> He's like, yeah. And he goes, what's this for? He goes, to give to people. Make sure you're always a giver, not a taker. Oh. And he walked around giving everybody a dollar. And he was so funny. He literally said to one of the people, you look like you need two. And gave them two dollars. <laughs> it was really funny. But it's an important lesson to be a giver, not a taker. And, so uh, I have an old friend who was a war photographer. And he stepped on a landmine in Afghanistan. And he lost one leg. Two legs and an arm. So the first thing that he did was grab his crotch. It was fine. Um, when he stepped on the landmine yeah. to make sure his, okay. Um, and he was rehabilitated in a very famous hospital in England. He's a British guy um, that usually only does soldiers, but he okay. was like 40 years old at the time, but he, he learned to walk again and he went back to being a photographer and he went back into these communities and helped everyone. And I sat down with him once and I was like, you know, it's incredible after like what you've been through that you're going back and you're helping. And he said, to do that kind of work, to give, it has like a ripple effect. Oh, like yeah. Of a sure. Oh, yeah. It's sure. that like you throw it and you don't see <clears throat> like all of the effects of your help. Yeah. But you know it happens. that yeah. it keeps going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A hundred percent. And and also, I mean, it always comes back to you. Always. Uh, you know. And, uh, know. and know that it's not going to come back from who you helped. Yeah. Help whoever you're helping. Don't worry about getting it back from them. It'll come right. from somewhere else. Because you're big, putting good energy. Lesson. It's energy, yeah. What kind of energy is it? Mashiach energy. <laughs> Mashiach. And that's why, uh, how, how come author, be, uh, Weitz and Luxembourg became our sponsor. I keep saying author because I just, I, 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 it is the law firm. Because we're sitting at dinners and I'm showing author different DMs from different people that were moved by our podcast. Our podcast, this is it. We don't, we don't discuss politics, we don't discuss war. Yeah. We, it lets people have a moment in their head where they hear three people yapping and yammering and yenting, and it just gives them a moment to relax. And then we have things like with the gay kids and different things no, that we we've helped. No, we talk about important that we helped, stuff And he, he said, an author said yeah. to me, how can I help? Exactly. And, and that was it. And that's how I feel. You guys are not a charity. You're not a 501c3, but I feel like you're doing so, so much good. Oh, thank Besides you. Besides the podcast and, and, and all your 
you know, uh, so many of your appearances, you know, are, are, are charity related, raising money for such incredible causes that are near to my heart for a small amount of money. If I could be of help yeah. to, to a, an organization like this, and that's what it is, Modi. It's an organization. This is an organization. Yeah. Uh, and that's how I feel about it. And I'm Thank really you. proud to be a part of it. I didn't even really need any plugs or anything, you know, for my law firm. Uh, I'm not expecting really to get. Although someone did, someone wrote to me and said, um, hi, I have some case. <laughs> and um, somebody told me that, you know, Arthur Luxembourg from your podcast. <laughs> Yeah. So can you By make the, the introduction? And the I get you. It's true. <laughs> and I, you know what? Probably you gonna, never know. I'm probably going to get some cases from here. Mm -hmm. You know? God willing, hopefully. Okay, before. What? I, we no. cannot end the show without talking about your outfit. Oh, oh come on. No, 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 no. Epic, epic. You epic. are, Not for those of you. Perry. For Perry. those of you Perry. who are uh, Perry, amazing. I love it. Perry. Um, <laughs> I'm calling For, you Perry from now on, you too. You can call me Perry, too. For those of you who are only listening, let's start with the blue suede shoes. Are you look so chic. I'm just going to tell you something about blue suede shoes, guys. Yes. I brought back, I know my kids are going to laugh, Liz and Jack, they're going to laugh because I say this and, like, nobody believes me. Yeah. But it's true. I brought back blue suede shoes into fashion <laughs> about 10 years ago before anybody, no, no, you're laughing. I'm no, 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 I'm <laughs> laughing because we started with Perry, this is not important yeah. to, I no. brought back. No, important. no. So important. I am very passionate about this. Yeah. I'm with I, you, I love it. And I, I don't care who, hopefully somebody, you know. He was gonna say putts, you're gonna say some putts. Somebody. <laughs> Listening here says, what are you talking about? We had blue suede. No, you didn't. <laughs> no one had blue suede shoes, right? Nobody had where effing you, first blue of all, suede great. shoes. Right. Now, where I'm 100% sure that you have several places and only those places where you get your shoes. I do have a few places. No, he's got a few places. You yeah. Got but, very, few, but few. Right. Few. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. A few, but not so, a lot. So what's your favorite shoe brand? I should, I should actually plug it? Yeah, why not? Plug it, right? Go ahead. Okay. Can I guess? So you're not going to guess. You're not going to guess, so right. don't. Oh, oh. You're not going to guess. Yeah. Okay. But go, go for go it. Go for it. What are you going? Uh, Brunello. Uh, no. no, but no. by the way, Brunello Cuccinelli is, uh, the brand is very dear to me. In fact, I've, I've represented them, so I could plug them. So I'm not going to not get it either. And I've gotten, and I've, I have many shoes from them. Okay. okay that's all I'm going to say. And. <laughs> Big shout out to my good buddy, Massimo Corona, who's been a friend for decades. Okay. Wait, how, oh, how much of a discount do you get from the uh, uh, Cuccinelli? <laughs> I think you guys are going to get a discount also. I want a discount from yeah, the Cuccinelli. And, and, and by the way, by the way they, make a, they make a nothing. beautiful black t-shirt for about $1,000. $1,000. Yeah, a pair right. of jeans, yeah. 1250 on, on sale sale in the outlets. I think I could hook you up. I, a, we would, we some would of that. I just want to revisit the part where yeah. I'm not going to get it, gonna and get then it. I got it. No, no, you're not. You're not. You're not going to get it. You're not going to get it. But so anyway, so so uh, Manalo Blahnik. No. Makes, Manalo Blahnik makes one of the funnest, finest men's shoes around. Uh, the first time I saw them, uh, they had a little shop in the Burlington Arcade in London. For those of you who know the Burlington Arcade, you are lucky. If you don't know the Burlington Arcade and you love London, when you go to London, walk through the Burlington Arcade. It is insanely amazing. I mean, no. I don't know what to say. So they had a tiny little shop. Okay. And in the Burlington Arcade of men's Manalo Blahnik. I never even knew they made them. Neither did I. I had no idea. <coughs> He's a Kerry Bradshaw. Uh, yeah, they made it famous. Yeah. But they made men's shoes that are fun, that are just highly styled, uh, just a simple loafer like this. This is nothing, but what if it was in red and purple and pink? They have yeah. all those colors, all those colors, and they're amazing. And I, uh, I wish them a lot of luck, but that's my shoe of choice. Manolo's. Manolo Blanc. Manolo's. All right, and the suits are custom? Suits are custom made. 
Now, when did you start getting suits custom made? Because you when said you, you started out. When did you was to look sharp? Like you started out you as. You know, I, I, the truth is I never dressed for anybody. I never, we never had a lot of money. We were comfortable. We were comfortable. And you know what? I'm proud to say uh, my grandmother took us shopping at Alexander's. <gasps> If you yeah. know in Queens, yep. in I, that's Alexander. I grew up. A, uh, no, Be, Regal Park. Before, Regal yes, Park, right. yes. I grew up across yeah. the street before, from Alexander's. Be, before the holidays, before the holidays, she would take all of her grandchildren, the same seal, seal, take a shopping seal. Uh, to to uh, Alexander's. And uh, uh, when I got older and I became a lawyer, right? I became a lawyer. I wasn't making a lot of money. My go-to store was Sims. Sims. And I am. I, you I, like the way I you am, look, whatever the I hell that proud thing of was. It. I am like proud of it. And, and uh, you know, those kind of stores. And I, I try to dress as well as I could. And you know what? It was something that made me feel good. I didn't yeah. dress. I didn't dress for other people. My father was a very stylish guy. He was in the garment center for years. Oh, okay. And oh, he was. Okay. Yeah. My father was in the sweater business. Uh, he worked for a company. Uh, for many, many years. And, uh, you know, I like to look good. Yeah. And, uh, so, you know, it's, and, and by the way, just a, another message I'm passing on here. You could look good on any budget. Yeah. You know, you have a few good suits. You don't have a lot of suits. You have a few good suits. Buy, buy another couple of shirts. Buy another few ties if you're still wearing ties and change it up. Mm -hmm. No one will ever know you're wearing the same suit three days in a row if you wear a different tie and a different shirt. Yep. No one will ever know. So far as a black T-shirt, that's going to look the same every single day. Yeah. Not all black T-shirts are the same. No, the Cuccinelli There's... ones are very expensive. Well, let's see. I'll be happy to uh, to sponsor them. And, <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, we did set that up. We no, basically... we didn't because they they sent nothing. No, but we're gonna they sent nothing. No, but we're gonna send a T-shirt over and maybe. Something for you too, Terry. Oh my God. Yeah, we're gonna yeah. send. Wait, I, I'm not sure wait, what it's yet. It's so funny because your father was stylish. My, my, my Very father's go-to style was yeah. my father was in the gas station business, yeah. and we always bought him, and he bought himself Armani and this and that, yeah. all that stuff that was that was the day. But when some representative of Castro Oil or STP or any company gave him a shirt with the logo right. on it, that was it. That's my. He daughter. was so happy. Right. So when we got the H and M shirts and hats, I like loved it. I loved it. So the yeah, so, A and H. So, yeah. A and H. So yeah. first of all, um, I, people never can figure out if I'm like wearing like very expensive stuff or if I'm homeless. That's the way it should be. But that's she's the way either it wearing be. a vintage shirt from yeah. the Roma. Ro, what's it called? Romo's Romeo's Harley Davidson. No, that the band. Rolling Stones. No, not the Rolling Stones. That 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 plays. She's always wearing some some vintage T-shirt that's it. like she, I, got, I got this for four hundred fifty dollars. Uh -huh. I had a, yeah. had a bid yeah. for it, but it looks like something you'd give the housekeeper to do gl 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 glass plus with. That's this. What is it, Harley Davidson? Harley Davidson. Yeah, but probably vintage Harley yeah. Davidson. Of Everything course. with her is vintage. Right. Yeah. So it looks like you, unless you know it's vintage, it looks like something you give the housekeeper to, to, to do the, the glass exactly. plus with. <laughs> this <laughs> tank top was three hundred dollars. Right. So like, <laughs> Right. Yeah, and you uh, look at this Ami um, Shroel Chai This sweatshirt. I made, these I designs and I made. It's amazing. And when, when Ukraine was attacked by, by Russia, she was on the, on the thing, she made a sweatshirt that said F Putin, but like spelled yeah. in a Russian And thing. we donated really all the money. All the Beautiful. money. She gets on the ball right yeah. away. Beautiful. Especially for this thing. We just bought 101 jackets for soldiers. No, you no, you're amazing. Was, she's on the ball. She's like... Not just uh, writing a check. She's organizing in the synagogue. That. She's got boxes going. Amazing. She's amazing. amazing. I hosted, actually, this is very funny. I hosted, I told you, a fundraiser last night, a comedy show for Magenda Vida Dome. And somebody was like, said, oh, something horrible happened to me. And I said, what do you want to like, compare tragedies now? The people in the front row here were at the Nova Peace Festival. Oh, no. And I, <laughs> I, don't want, really I came and tell you, I, I will say the story. We've just been coming off of shows in Europe. And we were in Frankfurt. And the community, the Jewish community in Frankfurt, amazing. Amazing. Two huge shows in this massive uh, space. It was so great. And I got to meet them. I was there for two days. And I'm sitting at a dinner at the after party for one of the shows. And there's this Israeli kid that lives in Frankfurt with his parents. 
and he was at the Nova Peace Festival. Peace Peace Rave Festival. Mm -hmm. And he survived. And I go, what happened? And he was telling me, so you, you know, they're, they're dancing in the desert. Of course. So now the cars are parked here. They're dancing here with the DJ and whatever is going on. And I, I mean, I don't know if you've been to ever a desert rave, but it's... <laughs> but yeah, I've been to the desert raves. You have? Okay. So they're there. By some stroke I mean, of Burning luck. Burning Man, right? But you, you guys, you, you've been to Burning Man? You guys? Of, co of course. I... Yeah. <laughs> why would they? He's, he's <laughs> no, why would? No, why would? Modi, you're laughing. He's laughing. I'm not. Modi. Have you really been to Burning Man? Of course, I've been to Burning Man. I had a luxury, a trailer over there, and you're kidding. Yes, you're kidding. No, people of do course that. He's kidding. He no, 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 but people do but that. I know all about Burning Man. By I was way, about to say if it's funny. I ever had to go to Burning Man, it would only be yeah. with Arthur yeah. Luxembourg. Yeah. Why? Because it'd be good food. It'd be food. Yeah. Right. There'd be air conditioning. There'd be yeah. showers. Right. There'd and be I and I would only go with you because you'd have the best parties, <laughs> the, best. the best places to go. I was to going to with. say that. Um, well, so this guy was there, and I asked him, "How did you survive?" Yeah. Because the car, he said, "By chance of luck, I had to go back to my car." So I was a few feet from my car when I saw them coming down, the 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 invasion and the and I I got in my car and I started driving, and then they were in front of me. I ran a few of them over. One of them, when I was really trying to get out, was on a bike. I I hit him, and then I hey. just went to Beersheba. The stories are listen. The stories are going to be insane. They're just now starting up, but they're going to be crazy stories of what's happening. And that's it. And let me tell you something. Speaking of helping people, I'm Israel. The Jewish people have pulled it together. Everyone's helping in whatever they can. I'm telling jokes, making just giving people a relief. Some people are like like you sending food. I have a friend sending. He's just raising money for helmets. Mm -hmm. These special helmets. All he's doing, um, you know. Like I, I told you those that I, I did a show and some woman yelled out. Um, if Israel needed you to fight in the war, would you fight in the war? I said to her, if Israel's looking for me, they lost the war. <laughs> okay? But I do what I do. I, I, yeah. I help. We fundraise, as we did for um, for Eli Beer, for United Hatsala, with all the all of the, um, the biggest hotel people and uh, hospitality people. Amazing. They put, raised a million dollars in like that. Amazing. It's, you got to People were coming do. up to me after the comedy show last night going, thank you guys so much. You Exactly what you hear. We needed this so badly to laugh. Yeah, to just turn your phone right. off for a minute and just be, the war will be there when, you, when the show's yeah. over mm -hmm. and you'll be in a, a much better place. And so that, that's, that's what we do. It's where we help in whenever we can. And um, and happy almost Thanksgiving. It's This is going to air probably, I don't know. Whatever it's going to air. It's Whatever it's going to air. Anyway, we... We got a lot to be thankful for. We do, don't we? Right? I think that that's... I think that that's a good conclusion. It's a health, good... Health. Yeah. Hashem. We have good health. Whatever health we have, it's... Good it's, families. It's somebody with, with worse health. Right? There's always something to be thankful for. Amen. Absolutely. Absolutely. You woke up in the morning and uh, it's... There's somebody worse than you and just... And again, find a find a way. If one thing we can take away from the the podcast with Arthur Luxemburg, find some way to help somebody else. Mm -hmm. Love that. Is that is that the takeaway? Great theme. It's a great theme, and uh, I'm really happy to be here. Modi. Uh, we're you so know. happy that you're a part you of the know, podcast. Uh, I just I said to him, everybody's going to be so happy to I finally feel, meet him because we always hearing. mention you. I know, but he's I never know. heard a podcast. He's never listened to one of these podcasts. But Randy gives him the updates. The I wife was, gives him the updates. I'm going to. I'm not going to lie. Okay, I was thinking. <laughs> I was thinking of trying to find one like last night at like, <laughs> three o'clock in the morning. It's like, like, are you some effing idiot? Like, <laughs> like, like you prepare to go to court or something? Like, oh. watch what happens there. Yeah. I mean, you, you don't even know what's gonna happen. And I just figured, look, I'm so at home with you. Yes. So, you know, to sit here with you and just to schmooze for a little bit of time, it's like a respite from all the other. Uh, all the other obstacles and difficulties and that we go through and stress that we go through every single day. This is a, 
This is a machaya. Mashiach energy. Mashiach energy, mamish. I have so many shows to plug. Oh. Wait a minute. I'm guys. Those of you listening to me, I, the tour is released. We we waited a little bit after the war to release the the, but you make sure you find time to laugh. I have shows in San Diego. We sold out, but we're set, we're adding another show. The Paramount Theater in Huntington. We've uh, we're adding another show there. Um, all over the Kennedy Center, K9 Ahura is selling out. We might have to add another show there. We have shows in Dallas and a million other places. If Leo was here, he'd be able to rattle them all off. But go to modilive.com, find a show near you or a show near a friend of yours and let them know. Send them the link. Of course, be the friend who brings the friends to the comedy show. That is Mashiach Energy. And um, modilive.com for all the, all the shows. And do you have anything you want to? Picture. You can DM me um, if you want to buy an Am Yisrael Chai sweatshirt, and all of my shows are on my Instagram at Periel Ashen Brand. And Arthur Luxembourg, if you need if you need Lux uh, Whites in Luxembourg, it's WhitesLux.com. I hope you don't. I hope <laughs> you don't. But if you happen to need us, we're, we're always there. there. We're always there. Thank you so much for coming on today. Great to be Mashiach here. Mashiach Energy. Thank Happy you. Happy holiday to Thank everybody. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. We're out. Thanks. Amazing.